Hey guys, a um, bit of an update. We've started our trip towards Tassie. We left yesterday from the Hunter Valley, a farm that we'd been staying at. Drove down to Gundagai, stayed at a donation campsite down there on Monley Creek. And today we've driven to Tungamar which is in Victoria, uh, about 30 k's out of Yarrawonga and we're going to camp up here on the side of this creek and we've got a couple of days before we need to be in Geelong ready to jump on the boat and go to Tassie so we'll try and film a bit more because we've been a bit lazy of late and um, keep you up to date as to where we're going the truck's going great, first time we've driven it in probably four months, five months, so uh, we've been living in it still but first time we've driven it we've done about 700 k's in the last two days and yeah she's running beaut. Anyway, time to cook some lunch up and uh, get back to it. What do you got going on here? Bacon. And Eventually eggs. New day. We've just driven from that joint we'll camp at to Mount Macedon. Currently up top, just had some lunch. Trucks parked there in the background. Mount Macedon is a regional park, so it's dog friendly. So we're just about to go out to the Major Mitchell Lookout and Memorial. So I'll take you with us. Major Mitchell Plateau. Goats just chilling out the side of the hill there. Pretty nice view out in the west. Thoughts? I still can't believe like we lived close to here for so long and never came adventuring. I'm super glad that on our way to our next adventure that we've stopped in and had a look. Um, the view was really breathtaking. Absolutely beautiful. Camp at Bunjil's Lookout. It's only about 30k from the Spirit of Tasmania dock. It's the truck in the background. For those of you that aren't familiar with Bunjil, Bunjil is a creator for the Aboriginal people. He comes in many forms, but typically the wedgetail eagle. Um, Bunjil created the mountains, the rivers, plants, the animals, and the laws for people to live by. Once Bunjil was done with that, he asked Wayne to open his bags up and let the wind out. Wan was the crow and uh, he asked him to open his bags and let the wind out. So he opened a bag and let some wind out and he asked for more and more and more wind until finally it was like a cyclone and Bunjil and his wives were swept up into the skies and they became stars. Bunjil was asked upon a few more times by the Aboriginal people. There was feuds between tribes and the sea was rising as a result of this and they asked Bunjil to stop it so he came down and drove his spear into the ocean and uh, made the sea stop rising as long as everyone got along. Bunjil's a very important person to the Aboriginal people. 
and it's great that there's such a look out here that's well presented to help inform everyone about Park Jaw and the importance of this. We're going to camp here for two nights, it's a 48 hour stop, taking hopefully will be a beautiful sunset and on the other side a beautiful sunrise and then from here we've got one night in Caravan Park down in North Geelong and then we're on the Spirit off to Tassie. Good morning, it's day one on Tasmania. We arrived last night, travelled about five kilometres to uh, I believe it's Horsehead Creek RV area which is just there in the background. Nice and close to where you get off the Spirit. Flat ground, $11 through the Easy Park system. I think you can stay a couple of days. By the time we got off the boat, we didn't really want to drive too far, so this was nice and close and simple. We're going to move on from here today, go check out a few waterfalls, and, uh, see where the day ends ends up. Haven't really picked where we're going to camp. Uh, the Spirit, pretty good journey, smooth sailing. We ended up putting Gus in one of their cages instead of putting him in the truck as we'd planned to. Um, they're just like the cages at the vet. He travelled really well, no issues. Uh, we both travelled well, no seasickness. It was a fairly good experience, the Spirit. Uh, the food was reasonable, it was reasonably priced. Don't expect flash co coffee. The guys didn't really know what they were doing that were running the coffee machine. Um, but all in all, pretty good experience. I probably wouldn't day sail again though, because it is a long journey sitting in the recliners. We've got uh, night sailing on the way back to the mainland and I think if I was to come back we'd do night sailing again. It'd just be far easier on yourself. I was pretty sore by the end of the day uh, with lower back issues, but that's something I always have anyway. So, yeah. So a bit of an overcast morning. Typical Tassie welcome, they tell me. But, uh, just going to have some breakfast and hit the road, find some waterfalls. Campgrounds like this, you always want to choose your neighbour, not let your neighbours choose you. So when we rolled in yesterday, I spotted this old school Azuzu bus. So I parked up straight next to him, knowing that he'd be a good old boy and up for a yarn. And I wasn't wrong. He flat toes a early Hilux behind it as well. It's got nearly half a million kilometres on it. That good yarn. Already invited us to stay on his property in central Queensland. It's the people you meet that make the trips. Just pulled up at uh, Preston Falls. It's only about a 15 minute walk apparently. So just heading down to check out our first waterfall. And um, yeah, walk in's looking pretty good already. First waterfall. Is it going to be a good one? Hope so. Well, it's very pretty. Yeah. What do you reckon? It's really cool. It'd be cool to be able to go down and swim in there, but I think it'd be a bit chilly. So that was Preston Falls, and just walking back up to the truck now, and we're going to head on to another waterfall which I can't remember the name of right now. I'll see you there. Alrighty, just driven up to Penguin along the coast road to Burnie and turned back inland and we're at Guide Falls now. So just gonna wander down, have a bit of a squeeze at it. Here we are, Guide Falls. Pretty impressive waterfall. What's your thoughts on this one, Kaz? It's absolutely breathtaking. 
lady, day one of Tassie has sure delivered. So I know I said we were going to go to a campsite next, but uh, we didn't really like that campsite. So we come to a location called the Big Tree, and then we're going to go to Dip Falls, and after that we'll try and find a campsite. Let's go through this tree. Tree? Yeah, it's a big tree. Do give it a hug. Don't Are my arms all the way around? Yeah, almost. <laughs> Well, they didn't lie. It's definitely a big tree. Well, there it is, Dip Falls. I reckon this one is the best one yet. I think they've all been good. They've all got different appeals. I really like the last one, but like they've all been pretty cool. So I'm not disappointed in any of them, and I'm happy with them all. Good there. Bottom of dip falls now. Fairly impressive waterfall. And, uh, pretty nice looking river or stream, whatever it is as well. I dare say it's loaded with trout too. What kind of score do you give this waterfall now, Kaz? I give it a 10 out of 10 now. Just the perspective makes it all different. Cool. Travelling's meant to be pretty easy, but uh, Quite a few stairs in front of us now that we've wandered down here. We've got to earn it. So we've just got to Peg Beach Campground. Just going for a bit of an explore along the beach itself. Um, you can see Stanley's nut out the back there. Going to head there after this camp. Uh, it's pretty nice actually here. We um, drove along quite a bit of coastline today and, and some of it was really pretty. Uh, most of it is kind of rocky beaches, but um, beautiful white sands here. Heaps of rocky outcrops. Should be pretty good fishing, I imagine. So uh, a bit of an explore and maybe get a fishing rod out later. Righto guys, that's a wrap on day one in Tassie. We'll um, pick on up tomorrow or the next day. Hooroo!